All right, so I'm going to talk about the simple masks now. So, simple mask is a device you'll see. We see it a lot in uh, our post-surgery area. It's a nice way to deliver some oxygen. Also, I've seen it in labor rooms. They give it to to a laboring mother if needs some oxygen. She doesn't like nasal cannula. It's a nice way to deliver oxygen, but it's a very poor way to give an exact amount of oxygen. So we're just going to throw some oxygen at this patient. You know, maybe their saturation will come up. Maybe they'll feel a little bit better. But with this device. Yeah, as you see, it's a mask, has a little adapter on it, it all comes together. Uh, it's going to deliver anywhere from like 40 to 60 percent. Now, that's a, that's a broad range. So, it's nothing that we're going to use when we're going to be weaning oxygen or anything like that. So, generically, you can put a low flow of oxygen on this if you want, but usually it's recommended. We usually go anywhere from usually 8 to 10 liters. So, I'll plug this in, go to 8 liters, and you can hear it running. This is what you'll see. Um, in some of those other areas they're just delivering oxygen the patients aren't necessarily critical but we're just going to kind of deliver oxygen obviously it goes over the the back of the head here and this part squeezes down the nose and we can give the patient oxygen so one thing to note note with this you notice there's also holes in this part of the mask and in this part of the mask right here in case this flow would come be shut off and no longer come into the mask the mask will fog up so you'll know something happened Plus, you can hear the flow meter running back here. But then, the patient will still be able to breathe. Uh, this isn't sealed to the face like a CPAP mask. So, they'll be, still be able to breathe, but it will be uncomfortable after about 30 seconds to a minute. So, it's just one thing to kind of look out for. So, that's the simple mask. You won't see a lot of those around, but just in case you do, kind of a generic oxygen device. The big boy that we see the most often, of course, used in EMS world, ER, and any place where a patient's getting ready to crash, is the non-rebreather. So what this is all about is they are going to, um, for one, non-rebreathe their CO2. But what, we're, what they're going to do is they're going to pull 100% oxygen each breath from this. So this device, we call it 100% that we're delivering. In all honesty, it's more like 80 to 90 it's really hard to deliver 100% unless you have an endotracheal tube in somebody or you have a CPAP mask seal on their face. So the, the thing with a non-rebreather, let me unplug it here real quick. It'll come like this. And you'll see the little bag hanging off of it. That means it's not ready to go. Don't put this on a patient with the bag deflated because usually what happens is when they take a breath, there's a one-way valve in here and they're pulling air from, guess what? Nothing that's in the bag. So you'll see the bag deflated on it. So one thing you always want to see, if you walk in a room, let's say for rapid response, you see someone on a breather, you should always see this bag inflated. It's like an RT's uh, pet peeve. On a non breather, there is only one liter flow that goes on this. 15 liters or even higher. See what happened to the, the bag? It blew up. And that in that bag right there, that is 100% oxygen. You'll also see somebody stick their hand in here and put their hand over this thing. Over that valve, it will blow that up even more. It fills it faster when you need it. So when it goes on the patient, it looks a little bit like this. And you'll see this mat, this, this, uh, the bag inflated like this, and this is what it should sound like. When they take their breath, you'll actually notice this bag, this bag will deflate a little bit, and then it will fill up while they're exhaling. Not while they're exhaling into it because it's a one-way valve. But what'll be what'll happen is the oxygen from the flow meter will refill it. So each time they take a breath, it comes from this bag and delivers really close to 100% FiO2. Now you walk in the room and you see your patient on an onward breather, and this happens a lot unfortunately, and somebody just put on three liters and you look and that thing's deflated, um, you'll know that something's up. For one, you're not delivering much FiO2 at all. And then uh, for two, this is kind of a fun thing, you know, if you're watching soaps with your non-medical uh, partner and you're like, the cool thing about the soap operas is this is where you can always catch them on being non-authentic because every time they put somebody on non breather on the soaps it's always deflated so if they would ever want to consult a respiratory therapist or a nurse they would just have some external air piped in to make this more realistic by having this inflated so um, in real life this is always inflated it looks a little bit like this and then you'll notice some little pieces of diaphragm that might be covering up these holes. What that does, it actually increases the FiO2 that you're delivering to your patient. Remember, a non-rebreather is temporary. You can leave them on this for a while, but they're gonna need something else. 
either ventilatory support or non-invasive ventilatory support uh, because uh, this is a high high amount of FiO2 that you're delivering with a non-rebreather. So, and transport's great, not for long periods of time.